All right, we are going to continue our discussion about big object. So on this section, we are going to define a custom big object. So like creating a custom object, it's pretty similar, but not really. So you can start from setup and then enter big objects, select big objects, and then you can create and add some details. Then you create the custom fields and then you add an index and then you save it and deploy it. And that's it. And you are ready to go and use the new big object. So we are going to create an actual big object during the challenge. So we are going to skip this. We'll talk through it during the challenge. So big object custom fields, um, what type are supported, lookup relationship, daytime, email, number, phone, text, text area, and URL. So after that, we have to define a custom big objects index. Now, this is important. Remember, the fields defined in a big objects index determine the big objects identity and ability to be queried. All right. The fields defined in your index should be the fields that will be most relevant to your queries. So you have to have foresight and do some planning here. Okay, remember that. The order in which you define the fields is also a big con consideration. If you're using SQL to query your big object, you can query only the fields that make up your index. So if your index contains three fields, you can only query those three fields. Other fields cannot be queried. All right, on the SQL um, statement. In, in the order you define them in, okay? Assign the field you will use most frequently in a query filter to the first position in your index, remember that. You can also use only specific comparison operators depending on the field's position in your query. We go into more details about querying in the next unit. All right. So keep these considerations in mind when you define the index. An index must include at least one custom field and can have up to five custom fields total. So you can define up to five custom fields as your index. Custom fields included in the index must be marked as required. It has to be required because it can't be left empty because that's the index, right? It has to be filled. Long text area is not supported. Total number of characters cannot exceed than 100 characters. Once you have created an index, you cannot edit or delete it, remember. So you have to create a new big object if you need to modify it. Big object index details, the label, the label is the label, like usual, name is the API name and then the index field, which we just discussed. So example, custom big object. So we won't be following this because it will be redundant because I'm just going to create the challenge together with you because this is an example. And then there is a challenge that will create the same, um, not the same, another big object, but let's do the hands-on for the challenge. Mine as well, right? So you deploy it. Once you deploy it, you're done and you can, you can populate the big objects using data loader or um, SOAP API and then you can define your CSV. And then this is how you do it with, um, with um, Apex. So you use database.insertimmediate if it's a SQL, right? Um, no, if it's, if it's, if you just populate, this is just to populate that. So customer interaction, um, you just define that and then you define the fields, what that is, and then you insert immediate. So that's pretty straightforward. There's a warning, Apex tests that use mixed DML calls are not allowed and will fail. If you write 
only to the big object, the test inserts bad data into the target big object that you have to delete manually. The test inserts bad data. To, to contain test DML calls to the target thing big object, use mocking framework with Apex Tab API instead. So this is for Apex tests, all right? So let's do the hands-on challenge together. So before we do that, I am going to launch our hands-on org on the, from the top here. Click on there, hands-on org, open it on a new tab. And then it's all, all, all almost expired there. I'm just going to launch the developer beginner. And can close this tab. So we are launched there. So all the way down to hands-on challenge, okay? Create and deploy a custom big object. All right, so the label is rider history and then rider histories is the plural. So I'm gonna go to my trailhead playground, go to my setup over here. And then we are going to search for big objects over here. And we are going to make our first one Histories, right? And then we can define the custom fields. There is a few there. Let's do it together. This is pretty straightforward, right? So it's in development. I'm going to save. So let's create the custom field. New. The first one would be Start location latitude. I'm going to copy this. All right. And then number seven, four required. No, it will be a number. Next seven, four decimal and not required, right? Yes, not required. So next, next and save a new because we are going to create the next field. Start location longitude, same thing, 74, not required. Number next, 74 decimal, not required. Next, next save a new next start time start time is date slash time it is required so date slash time this is required so check the required box there next next save a new the next one is end time end time is Date slash time not required. Date time over here. Next. Not required. Next. Next. Save a new. And then service type is text 16 characters not required. So text. 16 characters not required. Next, next, save a new. Rider account text required. Text, next, rider account. How many characters? 16 as well. And this one is required. Next, next, save a new. Hopefully the last one, rider rating is decimal um, two one number. It's a number, rider rating, two one decimal. Is it required? No, 
not required. So next, so you define it as required whenever you want to use it as an index. Okay, so now we can define an index, a new index. What do we want to name the index? Labor, um, rider, history index. There, and then index position. One is rider account descending, start time descending. Rider account, one descending, one descending, right? Descending, descending. And then that's it. And then we just need to deploy it. I'm going to save it. Hmm. Review all error messages below to correct your data. One is set as the index position for multiple fields. Provide a unique index position for each field. What? Oh, one and two. My bad. So save. And then back to our big objects over here. Here. And we are going to deploy it. Edit this guy. And then deploy it. Save. That's it. So now this big object is ready to be populated. You can populate it with any um, Apex code. However, you want to populate this or initially initialize it with a CSV. And then you can do a query using Sockle or async Sockle based on these two fields, the account and the start time. So that's basically it. We are going to grab our 500 points and I will see you on the next one where we are going to talk about querying the big objects. Okay, I'll see you on the next section. Bada bing, bada boom. Hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce App Exchange. And do yourself a favor, like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it. Don't take my word watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself bada bing bada boom